Welcome back to F-Zero Climax. Today we'll be exploring a new game mode that has been introduced to F-Zero. It is called Survival Mode. You unlock it by doing... something. I'm pretty sure you unlock it by finishing all of the Grand Prix on first place. Something like that. Anyways, what Survival Mode is essentially, there are three sets of missions. Tour, Battle, and Challenge. For each of these, you select the machine and then you have to get through all of the missions in that set with a limited number of lives. If you fail, you obviously lose a life and have to try again. So that is the idea behind survival mode, although, in my opinion, the missions don't really reach the spectacular levels of F-Zero GX's story mode. Although they do try, they pull out a couple gimmicks that I don't really like. For this first course, is uh, straight up beat Octoman to the finish line. And it is a one-way course, so that's a that is good for variety at least. But yeah, I wouldn't say any of Tour Mode's missions are all that interesting. But hey, we're racing against the Soldier Anchor. Why it couldn't be the actual Death Anchor instead of a lame recolor is beyond me. So, anyways, as for the m machines I decided to use in each of the three sets of missions, there was no real rhyme or reason to it. I selected the Great Star because, hey, I should show what is essentially the worst machine in the game, so why not? I mean, it's got worse stats than the, the Golden Fox, that's gotta be saying something. Most of these missions don't last more than 60 seconds because that's pretty much par for the course in, in Climax in general. Like, the races don't top two minutes usually. And in this particular course's case, it's just a straight course. Like, all you have to do is hit a dash plate or two and victory is assured. Come to think of it, I'm pretty sure if you selected a machine with really low top speed, you'd be a, at a real disadvantage for this. Rocket start or bust. And no, the missions do not change depending on the character you select. Uh, what would be the point of keeping track of your total time in that case? Although, actually it does change. If you were using a character that you would have originally raced against, like if I were using Roger here, I would be racing against Antonio Guster in the fourth race instead. Speaking of which, Slalom Link this is a course that you're supposed to navigate by using the L and R buttons, and don't worry, we'll be seeing Slalom Link again, so we'll see it done properly eventually. Anyways, I don't bother to show any of the races against Antonio Guster because... Why? They're just straight races for the most part, like this. This is just a three lap race. There's no gimmick to it other than the fact that we're in Firefield. <laughs> Firefield again. I just can't get away from this planet. Although there is a disturbing lack of landmines in this course. Not a whole lot of lava either. See, landmines are kind of the gimmick of Firefield. If you take those out, then it's not going to wind up being all that interesting. Oh well, we'll be past it eventually. I guess it is kind of interesting with the Great Star's low durability. And I just lost the ability to boost. So, what do you unlock by playing survival mode? I mean, the save file I downloaded obviously only had one clear of one of the sets of missions. What you get for beating the survival modes is you unlock episode summaries of the TV show because Climax had came out by the time the TV show had ended its run in Japan so you can get episode summaries here and you can also unlock pilot profiles. These are completely worthless if you do not know Japanese because the text is still in Japanese. I mean most of the game is already in English anyways but for the pilot profiles and such they left that untranslated. Apparently nobody knows how old Mr. EAD is. So that's an episode summary being unlocked. Completely pointless, I know. Also, something about the control setting? Not really sure what that is. Challenge mode is up next. 
I suppose I'll just pick a machine here and roll with it. Hmm. I haven't used the white cat in this game yet. Let's see if it's... Let's see if its grip is as good as it was in GP Legend. Ah, we're starting with Port Town. I can get behind this place. I love rocket starts. I don't love doing that though. That was a silly mistake. So I'd say ch challenge mode is going to be a bit of an interesting ride because it has my favorite quote unquote mission type in all of survival mode. And no, there's no real difference between any of the three survival modes beyond what missions they contain. Um, battle mode, I think, randomizes the order of the missions, but that doesn't really change much. In fact, the order might be randomized for all of them. I'm not really sure. I never put too much time into this. Next up is... Slalom Link again. But this time I'm going to do it properly. And by properly I mean don't boost. That'll make you too fast. Instead, we just slide with the L and R buttons, take a little damage, and we're out. You gotta wonder why the right side of the course is like that one and you're not even going to drive on it. Okay, this mission is, is a top keep mission. That means you can't fall to second place, ever. If you fall to second place, it's an instant failure. Which pretty much means don't hit any of the walls and always boost. Mist Flow makes it a little tricky, but it's nothing to worry about, really. It, it will be something to worry about if I keep hitting walls. And that was interesting, I hit the jump plate from the opposite side that, you're, that you'd normally hit it from. Why is that jump plate even there? No one's gonna hit it. I propose I come back to this course and test it for shortcuts. Because, you know, I'm getting kind of a shortcut -y vibe from where that jump plate is placed. So that's out of the way. Next we have... Oh, it's just another one-way course. Let's see, there's a path split. The right path is probably the better option. Of course, you could probably switch from one path to the other for a better time. Most people just care about finishing the race. They don't want to, like... That was a silly mistake. Anyway, it's a pretty simplistic win again. And next up is... Ah! You're gonna like this one. Remember Chapter 6 from F-Zero GX? This is pretty much that mission all over again. Don't let your speed drop below 800 kilometers an hour. Yeah, I should note that the machines cruise at about 1,000, depending on the machine. This would be difficult if the machine I was using had bad acceleration or something, but it's... Pretty much just a regular race with a stipulation that will almost never come back to haunt you. Maybe if I it were like, don't fall below 950 or something higher like that. I mean, there's no hard mode or anything. Hey James, use the boost to get through! <laughs> uh, I can't believe I did that. A Star Fox joke in an F-Zero LP, and this is a completely boring and pointless course. What was the difference between Straight Link 1 and this? Oh, this is the worst. I absolutely hate this race. We're an illusion, and what they want you to do is break right before you fall off the track. Yes, 
you have to use the brake button for once. Only thing is, it doesn't let you brake nearly quick enough. So... Instead of worrying about breaking closer to the edge of the course than the computer does, I decided to just destroy the computer and slowly stop. I almost fell off, as you can see. It's like right on the edge. In fact, I'm not in need of it in the gold area, so I don't know why that counts as a win, but I'll take it. That mission type is horrible, and... Is Michael Chain wearing earrings? Wow, I did not notice that. So it's a three lap race. I think it was three laps. Yeah, it's three laps. And we're in Silence Nightmare. It's interesting to me that the harder variant of this course is called Nightmare 1. Almost as if they were making reference to the Xbox One. <laughs> I stole that joke from the comments. <clears throat> so it's just a typical race. Shame you don't have to destroy Michael Chain's machine or anything, you know, interesting, like in GX. I mean, say what you want about GX. There was a low number of story mode missions, and at the and at times they weren't designed in the best possible ways. But they were cool and unique and interesting and different from the main game's courses. Ah oh, well, let's just get this over with. Before I start comparing the GBA games to F-Zero GX again. <laughs> Oh, hey, there's the F-Zero X's version of the Silence theme. I was wondering if they included it at all. And... The finish line should be right there. There we go. That's two survival modes taken care of. Time to go see what the thir third one has in store for us. No one knows how old Jody is? Well, I guess that makes sense. I presume I've unlocked her profile now. Maybe her profile will tell me! <laughs> I swear, Battle Mode had better involve destroying other machines, or it's not going to be in interesting enough for me. So I'm using Clank's version of the Dragonbird again, just because. Uh, and we're starting with a boring one-lap race. Oh well, it'll be over soon. Three, two, one. Fire. At least the Dragonbird is pretty fast compared to the White Cat. Uh, let's see here. Actually, Miss Flo's visibility hasn't been hurting me as much as I thought it would lately. I mean, the low visibility doesn't really hurt me that much anymore, is what I'm saying. Uh, there goes another gimmick. We only have three lives in battle mode compared to the other two. And this race will be actually pretty interesting. It's a death race. In these kinds of races, you have to destroy the machine that you're apparently racing against, even though there are like nine other machines in the race. So you just gotta destroy the hyperspeeder and the mission automatically ends. If you go three laps without destroying it, the it counts as a failure. That actually makes me wonder if you could just wait at the finish line for the hyperspeeder to show up even after it's completed several laps. So now we get to see how viable destroying other machines is. Uh, without the boost, not all that much. We'll have to wait until the second lap. 
Now, as I stated before, you cannot initiate a speed a, uh, a spin attack after using a boost. It's one of the weird quirks of the game, but you can still side attack them. You can still side attack during a boost, and that's probably what I'm going to use. Of course, I just have to get right next to it. And there we go! It's over! <laughs> that wasn't that hard, but it's better than GP Legend just making all the machines you're just supposed to destroy die in one hit like that. Here's... Oh no. Illusion Break Link again? Ah. Oh. Let's hope it goes well. And there's even a dash plate. How do you like that? Well, we destroy the machine right out of the gate, and... Oh, that was so close. That was even closer than the last time. Yeah, worth noting that a side attack will actually lower your speed a little bit. Just spam that if you think you're going to go over the edge. And, of course, there's a third slalom link. This is the hardest of the three because the gaps are tiny. So we have to bump into the other machine a little bit to get it to not do as well. Seven seconds isn't that bad though. Of course I'm out of extra lives by this point and hey, it's Leon! How's it going bro? Alright, this course is called Silent Secret Path for a reason. There are jump plates that, well, I don't think they'll allow you to take all those that great of just shortcuts, but you know, it's worth trying them out if you ever get to this point and want to experiment with the jump plates a little bit. You saw there was like a jump plate at the edge of one of the walls, and we stop the instant we, we reach the dead end. That makes perfect sense. Don't ask why Zoda's carrying an ice cream cone in his portrait. Actually, he did spend his Grand Prix winnings on ice cream that one time. Anyways, here's a pretty bland race. You've just got to finish without hitting any of the walls or Zoda's machine or anything at all. That is not very difficult if the course is just a simple oval with a couple dash plates. Yeah. Survival Mode's design is all over the place. Sometimes it's interesting and sometimes it's just, what were you thinking? Okay, this is going to be interesting. This course pretty much teaches you not to hold down when you go over a jump every single time. Because if you do that, you are guaranteed to fall past the next jump plate and die. At least if you do it while boosting. See, that's something I could see popping up in Zero Test. Not so much survival mode. It's almost done. There's only three more races, I think. Oh, this one's a real awful move by Nintendo, though. It's got the death wind mechanic again, and the wind is actually pushing towards you. And since every other machine rocket starts at the beginning of the race, you absolutely have to get a rocket start start yourself, or you're going to lose right out of the game. Since this is a top keep mission, you, if you fall to second place at any point, you lose. That isn't cool, but once you're past that, the rest of the race isn't much of interest. It's over in 30 seconds, of course. And here's... another speed course. It's still not difficult to stay above 800. You'd have to do a something cataclysmic in order to fall below that at any point. But hey, maybe Whiteland will make it tricky because Whiteland's got all this ice and it's not covering the entire course. 
Never mind then. Pretty sure you still have to come in first. Naturally. So we just have to finish up the final course of survival mode and we'll be out of here. Oh, we have to race against the crazy bear. This will be easy. It's Firefield. <laughs> Why do you like Firefield so much, F-Zero Climax? Come on! Of course, the Crazy Bear isn't such a horrible machine when the computer's using it, of course. Now, the, now this is what I call a fire field course. It's got lots more landmines. I should be able to pull through, as long as I don't make any silly mistakes. Two laps to go. You've got a new booster. And we have pretty much won at this point, because the Crazy Bear will never catch up to me. I have to wonder why the AI is not behaving like it does on Master Difficulty. Well, obviously you don't need to complete the game on Master in order to unlock Survival Mode. But still, I would like something a little more than just this, to be perfectly honest. So that's Survival Mode. Interesting concept, but I wish they... but I pretty much think they could have done more with it. I do not know why I did not hold down before landing there, and I do not know why I decided to grind the rail, either. Well, we've cleared all three survivals mission sets, so that just leaves the Platinum Cup and the Championship Circuit, and then we're done with F-Zero Climax.